Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Dr. Usman Akhtar and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today our topic is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura or we also can call it ITP. So idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura is basically a type of autoimmune disease where the autoantibodies is produced against the platelet and cause the destruction of platelet. As a result, there will be thrombocytopenia. Basically, look at the uh, pathogenesis. Basically, uh, on platelet surface, there is two type of receptor. When one receptor is used for the attachment with another platelet, and second type of uh, receptors are used with the attachment of uh, one millibrand factor with the platelet. So one is GP, 2B, and 3A, and another is GP1B. So for example, this is GP2A 2B 3A and one is GP1B. This is another protein. Basically, this protein uh, or we can say receptor GP2B and 3A, this is used with the attachment with another platelet. While the GP1B is used for the attachment of platelet along with the one millibrand factor. So basically in ITP or uh, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, this receptor is vulnerable. Against this receptor, the autoantibodies are produced. Basically, the ITP is a type 2 hypersensitivity where the autoantibodies, especially IgG, are produced against this GP2B 3A receptor. So whenever these platelets are uh, uh, flowing in the blood, these IgG will, will uh, attach to the platelet and uh, this platelet then called IgG coated platelets. So whenever such uh, platelets which is coated by IgG are circulating in our uh, blood this is sensed by different uh, chemicals, which is specifically IgG and C3B. These factors catch such platelets and bring it to the spleen. This process is called opsonization. Whenever these uh, platelets, which are coated by IgG, is come to the spleen, and the spleen, there is reticuloendothelial cells which destroy these, pla uh, these uh, platelets and cause thrombocytopenia. So this is uh, just a small uh, or we can say a short review of the uh, pathogenesis of idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. Now let's go for the classification. We have two types of ITP. One is acute ITP, another is chronic ITP. Acute ITP is we can say moderate to severe uh, symptomatic wise. It is uh, common in children and most uh, commonly it occurs post viral like whenever uh, especially uh, in children when they suffer from upper UTI tract infection viral type viral type uh, infection specifically uh, specifically URTI upper respiratory tract infection after that two uh, after the disease it take two weeks for the production of IgG and these IgG will uh, be produced against the surface uh, protein of the uh, platelets and through the swapsonization their platelet will be destroyed. But the most satisfying uh, point is it is self-limiting and most of these children are asymptomatic because the um, platelets count is uh, not destroyed so much that still the um, platelets are working normally. So such uh, in most of the pa patient or we can say most of the children, they are asymptomatic. Another type is chronic ITP. Chronic ITP when the ITP symptoms persist for a more than six months. So such a condition is called chronic ITP. It is not severe. Only 10 to 20 percent acute ITP go into the chronic. Like for example, uh, 10 patient uh, suffer from acute ITP. Only one or two patient 
went to the uh, chronic ITP. It's mean like the symptoms of acute ITP will persist for a, a six month, but it is still uh, symptoms are not very uh, severe like acute ITP. And another point in chronic ITP, it can be primary like itself. It can be idiopathic. There is uh, no uh, such reason or it can be secondary like it can be associated with the SAV, uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, or it can be associated with HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, or hepatitis C virus. So uh, chronic ITP can be primary, which is idiopathic. Uh, we don't know the exact mechanism, but it can be uh, secondary. And the secondary association is SLE, HIV, and HCV. Now look at the clinical feature. As we know, the whenever the for example, this is a, a blood vessel. So whenever there is breakage of uh, the continuity of the blood vessel, or we can say when there is the breakage of the endothelial lining, so all the platelets come together and cause the platelet aggregation, and they form a plaque there. So they uh, for the temporary they stop the bleeding from that surface. But now in this condition, when the, there is a reduced number of platelets, so the bleeding cannot be stopped. So there will be nosebleed, there will be gastrointestinal bleed, and the, sometimes the um, bleeding is going under the skin. So will cause petica and purpura. These are the bleeding manifestation on the uh, skin. There will be prolonged bleeding after a minor injury because, as I explained here, whenever there is a breakage of the lining of the blood vessel, so the platelet aggregation occurs. So, but here there is no platelet, so platelet cannot uh, aggregate and cannot stop. So, the pro there will be prolonged bleeding even after a minor injury. If the platelet count is down so much, then there will be intracranial bleeding. If the platelet count is too much decrease, sometimes if the platelet count is less than uh, 10,000, so there can be even spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage, which can be very lethal. But the very impo uh, important point here is no splenomegaly. So the spleen must be normal. How we will diagnose it? Basically, ITP is a clinical diagnosis. But what we can do in the investigation, if we go for a complete blood count, there will be thrombocytopenia, which is very obvious. Another very important, HB can be decreased if there is increased bleeding. If the bleeding from the different like nose or J, if there is chronic bleed, or we can say if the bleeding is so much, then it can reduce the HB. If there is chronic blood, there will be uh, hypochromic, microcytic hypochromic anemia. But if the blood is increased, uh, lo blood is lost for a more, uh, like duration is more, then there will be normocytic, normochromic anemia. The bleeding time will be increased, which is obvious. And another is capillary fragility test. This is the important one. This done is done with the tourniquet. We basically tied a cut tourniquet around the arm. For, and we keep it for some time, some uh, book says a five minute, but we can keep it for uh, five minutes. And after removal on that side of the tourniquet, there will be petechial rashes or purpuric rashes. This is capillary fragility test positive. So such uh, um, test or this test is seen in the uh, bleeding disorders. Another is bone marrow examination our bone marrow studies. So of course, when there is dis uh, the, uh, increased destruction of platelets and response, there will be increased production of the mega microcyte because it is a precursor cell for the platelets. So on, in bone marrow, there will be increased mega microcytes. Look at the management. An asymptomatic patient or where the platelet is more than 40,000, there is no need of any treatment. Just observe the patient. Another is supportive management and sub supportive management like what we can do. We can do, we can uh, avoid the needle injections. We can uh, prevent 
the um, if if of, of course most of the time is a child so we should take care of him that he should not fall on the ground and or we can prevent him from uh, minor injuries because these minor injuries can be proven very lethal another is corticosteroid and always the corticosteroids uh, play a very key role in any autoimmune diseases and another is ivig this is supposed to be drug of choice or we can say treatment of choice because these are preformed immunoglobulins whenever we give these immunoglobulin to the patient the patient is already having igg against the uh, plate um, surface of protein of the platelets so these iv ig for example this is a receptor against uh, or platelet receptor against the igg is produced so these igg are against this receptor so whenever we give iv ig so these iv ig goes and attach to this preform auto antibodies and will neutralize it so these iv ig will not destroy our platelet so it is proven a very uh, good type of management in such patient another if the um, platelet destruction is severe or so much because all the uh, some destruction of platelet is occurring in the spleen so if the destruction is so much we can remove the spleen but it should be our last uh, our last uh, step in management that's it thank you so much